this is Richard from Modern Health Span. In this video, we will look at a recent review paper from Dr. James Kirkland, one of the main authorities on senescent cells and senolytics. We had the honor of interviewing Dr. Kirkland previously. You can find the link to the playlist in the description. In this paper, he reviews our understanding of senescent cells and looks at the current and upcoming trials. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper. Strategies for late phase preclinical and early clinical trials for senolytics. Dr. Kirkland is one of the main authors. Let's have a brief recap on some of the key factors with senescent cells. They are one of the hallmarks of aging and contribute to age-related diseases and dysfunction. The unitary theory of fundamental aging holds that the hallmarks are interlinked and by intervening in one, most or all of the processes can be impacted. Senescent cells accumulate with age and are associated with frailty, cardiovascular disease, and many other diseases of aging. Early preclinical trials with senolytics have shown positive results. First clinical trials using a combination of desatinib and quercetin showed reduced senescent cells in the fat of diabetic kidney patients and improved physical function in patients with pulmonary fibrosis. Clinical trials with fisetin are underway. The initial trials are promising but more trials are needed. That is why there are currently parallel trials being run by the Translational Geroscience Network to see whether senolytics can be moved into the clinic. There are nine identified hallmarks of aging, though others have been proposed. The unitary theory of fundamental aging developed by Dr. Kirkland posits that targeting one of these processes may impact some or all of the others. Cellular senescence has been bidirectionally linked to the other hallmarks. That is to say, accumulation of senescent cells causes the other hallmarks and is also caused by them. Cellular senescence is a cell fate where cells enter a state where they no longer divide. As far as we know, this is not reversible. Senescent cells occur throughout life and have roles to perform, for example, tissue repair. They resist apoptosis, but are normally cleared by the immune system. Dr. Kirkland and others have proposed that at a certain point, the accumulation exceeds the capacity of the immune system to clear them, leading to a rising senescent burden and associated acceleration of age and disease-related dysfunction. This includes dysfunction of the immune system, leading to further accumulation of senescent cells. Clearing the senescent cells can break this cycle. Once senescent cells are cleared, they take 10 days to six weeks to reoccur, if the original cause is still present. There are two ways to reduce the impact of senescent cells. One is with senolytics, which cause them to die, and the other is with senomorphics, which suppress the secretion of SASP. Most of the work and all of the trials mentioned in this paper are with senolytics. 30 to 70% of senescent cells secrete a substance called SASP or senescence associated secretory phenotype. This contains several pro inflammatory factors such as TNF alpha and interleukin 6, which cause more cells in the region to become senescent. Here are the completed trials of senolytics. They are all for desatinib and quercetin and are focused on specific diseases rather than aging in general. There are a number of trials which are now being run with the same combination of desatinib and quercetin and others using fisetin, but most of these are still focused on specific diseases. This trial is looking at skeletal health in older people and includes both sets of interventions. Let's have a look at it in more detail. The trial is targeting to improve skeletal health in older people. As we get older, our bone health decreases and leads to osteoporosis. So this trial is to determine if senolytic drugs can reduce the level of bone resorption 
basically bone breakdown, in elderly women. I suspect that they chose women as after menopause, osteoporosis is more common in women. A key point here is that it is a phase two trial in healthy participants and includes all three drugs. The study started in June 2020 and is scheduled to be completed in March 31, 2023. The study is in three groups. One will take disatinib and quercetin, disatinib at 100 milligrams and quercetin at 1000 milligrams. The dosage is for three days a month over a period of 20 weeks. Interestingly, the quercetin is wrapped as a phytosome for delivery, which is very similar to a liposome. A separate group will take fisetin with the same schedule and a dose of 20 milligrams per kilogram body weight. And there will be a control group. I think it's really interesting because it is on healthy people targeting a common symptom of aging and will compare the result from disatinib and quercetin versus fisetin. Looking forward to seeing the, these results. More trials are planned, targeting both Alzheimer's and COVID. Preclinical and clinical trials take time. To speed up the process, the Translational Geroscience Group was formed to conduct clinical trials in parallel. There are eight institutions in the group, the Mayo Clinic, Harvard, John Hopkins, Wake Forest, Universities of Minnesota, Michigan and Connecticut, and the University of Texas Health Sciences Center at San Antonio, as well as other partners such as St. Jude's Children's Cancer Hospital. Dr. Kirkland talked about this organization in our interview with him. The hope is that the unified infrastructure and resources across multiple institutions, the TGN may be able to complete trials targeting basic aging faster and in a unified manner. In conclusion, they say that the hallmarks of aging may be the mechanisms that drive aging. And if their idea of the unitary theory of fundamental aging is correct, then intervening in one pillar will affect most, if not all of them. Senescent cells are a good target through senolytics and senomorphics. They call for combining aging therapeutics to see if they are synergistic or not. And I agree with this last point. It is clear that aging is the major risk factor it is important to establish collaboration and infrastructures like TGN to accelerate the research into agents that target the fundamental aging mechanisms so that they can be moved into clinical practice.